Hello, hello, and welcome once again, J76NY here, and welcome to the Season 3 premiere of Suzerain. Uh, we are going to be moving from the Anton Rain era in Swordland and uh, coming down here to the Kingdom of Rizio, where we're going to see how I do as a king. We're going to be playing as uh, this handsome devil right here, King Romus Taurus. Um, this is the first DLC released for the game Suzerain. The game is developed by... Corpor Games and uh, published by fellow traveler. Um, I put up a video in the comment or in the uh, community section from a channel called the uh, Templin Institute. Uh, if you haven't watched that yet, I highly recommend it. Uh, that is all taken from the in game uh, backstory and the history that the developers have created for, uh, in this case, the Kingdom of Rizia. Uh, these guys have gone above and beyond in making backstories for both uh, this and Swordland, uh, the base game. Uh, you have information available to you about just about everything offered in uh, hot links in a Wikipedia uh, style um, information tab. Uh, like I said, the, the amount of backstory that they have uh, on this is really phenomenal it's one of the reasons why I like the game is because they really put a lot of work into it um, if you are not familiar with the uh, game style of suzerain um, it is a role-playing game uh, text-based very much a choices matter type of game where you're offered uh, different choices both in terms of uh, government interactions and personal interactions and like I said choices matter and they do affect uh, the course of the story. Uh, first season of Suzerain I did it as a uh, kind of a f for the people type of thing as best I could um, and that the second season was more I called it the the douchebag playthrough where I played Anton as uh, a dick and got a completely different story than I did in season one. Uh, I will link to Season 1 and 2 playlist in the end cards of this video. Uh, if you would like to check those out, uh, feel free. Um, being the first episode of a series, if you could uh, kindly leave a comment with your thoughts and hit the like button, that'll help the uh, series get some traction with the algorithm of YouTube. Um, if you feel that it deserves it and you know someone that might like this game, feel free to share, that helps too. But right now we're gonna get into the uh, Rizia DLC. Uh, we are a semi-constitutional monarchy of 40 million people. Uh, state religion is uh, Ruhesism. <laughs> so it's not Nurism anymore, um, as it was in, Nurism was, uh, fairly prominent in Swordland up there. Uh, key exports are gas, gold, and wine, and the starting date is 1950. I'm assuming this is going to have some type of uh, lead up to the actual game where we get to kind of set the uh, foundation for our character. So let's, uh, let's get into this. It says torpor mo mode enabled, and if you don't know what that is, is it auto saves. Um, and you cannot save scum. So if you make a bad choice and it has negative consequences going down the line, you can't be like, well, hey, shit, I'll just reload and try that one again because choices matter and they they stick. So, all right, let's get into the story of King Romus Taurus and the Kingdom of Rizia. I have finished the main story. What's this? Starting a DLC story will automatically generate a default save file and finish the main story. Uh, I did finish the main story twice. Okay. Uh, 
Anarch, your reign and your abode, your scepter and the orb you hold, and A in the ground on which you trod and will dust something, whatever. Pause it if you want to read it. 1905, they do do the backstory. A prince is born. That is me. I was born in 1905. Uh, you open your eyes to this realm. Becoming king was never your choice. Uh, it was your birthright, it was your burden, or it was your calling. Um, well, if you didn't watch the video, which I hope you did, it's excellent, by the way. Kudos to them for a job well done. Um, my father uh, was married to a commoner, which caused a little bit of a stir in the community, I guess you could say, in the realm. Um, but he married her nonetheless. Uh, he didn't run off to America to raise pugs or anything, but... Um, that people were not too happy about it. I'm going to go with... It's my birthright. I'm going to... Because my mother was a commoner, I'm going to try and play it kind of middle of the road between a uppity royal and a man of the people, a king of the people. Not going to be out there playing uh, tennis with the, the commoners, but I'm not going to turn my nose up at him either. Uh, from a young age, you knew you were no ordinary child. You were Romus Taurus, grandson of Queen Lysia, ruler of all Rizia. Queen Lysia of Rizia, son of Crown Prince Valero, the Duke of Valenquis. Valenquiris. All right, this is what I'm talking about uh, with this. Can't click on him now, but... For most of the year, you lived with your father, Valero, and your mother... Estella in a lavish palace atop the cliffs of Monkeys. Each summer, though, you uh, visited your mother's common born family at their home by the Zill Harbor. Stayed with the Queen at the royal residence in Port Porte Drazan. And I'm gonna butcher these. When hunting went hunting with your father's brother Hugo in the forest of Brennus. Um Well, in real life, every summer uh, when I was younger and they were still alive, I would go for uh, two weeks to stay with my grandma. And I have very fond memories of those two weeks every summer. So I'm going to go stay with Grandma Queenie at the Royal Residence in Port Drazan. Maybe I'll learn something along the way, too. I think she was called uh, Liza the Great or something. You were fascinated by the splendor of your surroundings and the intricacies of your grandmother's court. Every autumn, you returned home a little wiser. It felt good to have caring relatives. I learned something. When Queen Liza died, the whole country grieved. This is 1918. January 28th, to be exact. But the mourning could only last for so long. There was a new king to crown. remember two things about King Valero's coronation. The whispers that Hugo, your uncle, now the Duke of uh, Valenquis, uh, oh was actually the rightful king and the shouts of protesters outside of the palace gates. Alone with your father after the ceremony, you asked him about the rumors, asked him about the protests, or didn't mention either. Um, I'm just going to let it go. Life in Port Drazon was less exciting than you expected. You were tutored privately and rarely had contact with non-royals. At the palace, the closest person to your age was Pabel, the groundskeeper's son. A quiet but friendly kid who knew about every plant in the palace gardens. You, uh, quickly became close friends, enjoyed bossing him around, or didn't have much to do with each other. We're gonna be friends with the, uh, gardener's son. 1923, when you came of age, your father invited you to start sitting in on royal council meetings. You decided uh, that you'd love to join, go to college instead, or join the military. Um, this one I actually have to think about it. 
by sitting on, on royal meetings, I would learn about the royal court um, and some of the ins and outs of that. If I go to college, I'll get a good education. That could go a long way. Um, or I could join the military and see which direction that goes. Well, it's my birthright, so I'm going to go with that. The council members took you under their wing, catching you up on the issues of the day. One of their main concerns was Pals, a former part of Rizia that had long belonged to the Empire of Volgos. Now that the Empire had fallen, War Counselor General Tadus Azaro was launching a military campaign to take the newly independent region back. You thought it was a lost cause, agreed that it was time to reconquer the territory, or didn't have an opinion. Um, I think Pals is the uh, southern part of Rizia. There's a part in the north that we had to lease to Wayland uh, because of their assistance in some type of uh, military affairs. That probably hasn't happened yet. But I probably just spoiled it. Uh, let's reconquer our lost territory. As you continued to serve on the council, the campaign in Pels dragged on. It seemed like an easy victory until your northern neighbor, Lesbia, got involved, sending weapons and financial aid. Peninsula, yep. Protest against the war sprouted up around the country. You asked your father to stop the bloodshed, uh, begged him to crack down on the traitors or refrain from taking sides. Well, I was all for it. See, if, if I do this, I could be seen as wishy-washy, I guess. Um, this could be a more hard-line approach. Uh, I'm going to let Dad handle it, so we'll just... I'm going to have to turn the volume down on some of these. Uh, you hoped it would all pass, but the fire had been lit. Your next council meeting was interrupted by the announcement that the Navy had mutinied. Bloody clashes between pro and anti-monarchists were erupting across the country. The Century of Revolutions had reached Rizia at last. Uh, Century of Revolutions happened throughout the region. Obviously, 100 years of monarchies being overthrown. Um, one of which that never was overthrown was Rumberg. head of palace security insisted you be driven to a safe house outside Port Drazon. As you left the city limits, though, an unmarked car swerved in front of you, blocking the road. A trio of masked men with guns jumped out quickly, overpowered your guards, and forced you out of the vehicle. This may be a real quick season. Uh, you complied with their d demands, you tried to run away, or you tried to fight them. Um... Uh, you complied with their demands. You tried to run away. You tried to fight them. I'm going to fight them. How with it? Your captor subdued you after only the slightest struggle. Yeah, that's what I thought was going to happen. You recognize one of their voices. Lucas Cezanne, Duke of Brennus, and the head of Rizia's third royal house. There's three royal houses in Rizia. A hood went over your head. <laughs> oh, boy. They held you captive for nearly a week. When rescue finally came, it was in the form of a man with a white, blue, and magenta flag on his fatigues. Wayland's flag. <laughs> At the palace, you pieced together what had happened. In desperation, your father had pleaded for the aid of a neighboring country, Wayland, now here we go, to neutralize the uprising. But their help came at a price. An agreement signed by both countries transferred ownership of the port of Zeal and its surrounding region to Wayland for the next 25 years. Uh, you wondered how King Valero would, could have been so stupid. 
You thanked him for restoring order. And you were just happy to be alive. There we go. Nice noose. The uprising had other consequences. The traitor Lucas Cezanne was executed and his pregnant wife sent into exile. Hmm. Why didn't they execute her, too? As for their punishment, Isa, the capital city of Brennus and the Cezanne's ancestral home, was handed over to your family. Your uncle Hugo was sent to serve as its steward. And you were to take his place as reigning Duke of Blancreers. God, they could have really come up with something a little more easy to pronounce. <clears throat> At your childhood home in Monkeys, you focused on finding a, and punishing the remaining traitors to the throne, largely ignored your duties, and lived the life of leisure. No, we are going to hunt down those traitorous rebel scum and wipe them out. The region came to see you as a cruel but capable leader. One day the king came for an unannounced visit. He brought with him a pale-skinned young woman with striking blue eyes. Hesitantly, she introduced herself as Lena Livingston, the sister of Queen Beatrice of Rumberg and your wife-to-be. So there we go, married to the mob. So the villains of the first two seasons of our playthroughs of Suzerain is now family. Kissed her hand. Very romantic. King Valero told you that you had no that he had no choice. With Waylon descending into civil war, Rizia needed a new ally. A partnership with the Kingdom of Rumberg, cemented with an arranged marriage, was in the best interests of both monarchies. Besides, he added, you would surely grow to love her. He was right. You and Lena began having hours-long conversations about your royal upbringings, hopes, and dreams. I wonder what would have happened if, it, if I chose he was wrong. I hated her ass. Hmm. Maybe season four. By the time you lifted her veil, you knew it was true love. How sweet. The year after your wedding and the birth of your daughter, Vina, were the happiest of your life. The only trouble was... That your royal obligation sometimes got in the way of being a good husband and father. That being a husband and father distracted you from your royal obligations. That you couldn't stop yourself from having the occasional affair. Oh. We'll go with the uh, royal obligations sometimes got in the way of being a good husband and father. With Rumberg's help, Rizia's economy bounced back to levels it hadn't seen since the glory days of Queen Lizia. My grandmother. Wealthy Rumbergians started moving to the cities. So did economic migrants from neighboring Morella and Derdia. And Wessex, seeking asylum from the Civil War. You? Uh, celebrated Rizia's new diversity, were suspicious of these newcomers, and welcomed the new arrivals, but were secretly glad that few of them settled in your province. <clears throat> it's now 1939. Many of the foreigners ended up in the province of Brennus, where a nationalist movement called Su Omin, Om, Omina, Omina began demanding that the king put Rizia above all. As Duke of Iza, your uncle Hugo turned a blind eye to Su Omina's activities, while his teenage son, Ricardus, became a vocal supporter. Eventually, Ricardus, better known as Rico, thank God, approached you about speaking at one of the group's rallies. Uh, I could, well, let's see here. Nationalist movement, Su Omina. I like the way that sounds. We'll put Rizzi above all. I'll go talk to the uh, group. You threw your weight behind Sue Omina, increasing the group's legitimacy and following. Your parents were displeased, but said nothing. A few years passed. 1942. You slowly realized that the upbringing, uprising had broken something in your father. It's like Abe Lincoln, doesn't he? He had scoliosis. He began neglecting his duties as he became increasingly preoccupied with threats, both real and imaginary. 
Outside of the country, he gained a new nickname, Bolero the Frail. You found yourself under more and more pressure to make up for your father's shortcomings. Lena was patient and understanding, one of the many things you loved about her. For her 10th birthday, Vina asked to go on a sailing trip with the two of you. You happily came along. In the middle of... Oh, wait. In the middle of the Gulf of Valenquiris, Valenquiris, we'll go with that, the weather turned unexpectedly stormy. When the captain tried to turn the boat around, it was hit by a breaking wave and cracked in half. The Coast Guard got to you and your daughter on time, but by the time they pulled Lena out, she was barely breathing. They rushed her to a hospital. She died holding your hand. Oh, God. You were devastated. After the funeral, your mother, Estella, came to visit and found you hardly able to function. You promptly move in to help out with Vina. Hugo suggested you turn to Ruchism, Rizia's official language to cope with your loss. Uh, in faith, you finally found solace. If anything, you became less of a believer. Uh, so I could go... Hmm. This is where doing this live could come in handy because you guys could give me kind of a suggestions as we go. <clears throat> in faith, you finally found solace. If anything, you became less of a believer. Or do I go cynical on it? I know that type of loss could definitely have that effect. I'm trying to think of how I would react personally. I'm going to go with, in faith, you finally found solace. <laughs> Meanwhile, the situation in the capital worsened. Brazilian nationalists continued to protest the loss of zeal and the country's increasing diversity. Rumors spread that an anti-monarchist movement was beginning to grow once more. Your father called Hugo back to the capital to keep an eye on his council. Uh, you wondered what the country was coming to. You reasoned the king had brought his troubles on himself. And you began to get suspicious. Uh, suspicious of what? Considering I kind of went along with everything. What's the country coming to? Outsiders also took notice of the king's decline. One of them was Axel Reinhardt, the new ruler of the Grand Duke of Pals. He sent you an invitation to, <coughs> excuse me, to visit him on two conditions. You were to go alone and without your father's knowledge. Kinda curious what he has to say. Uh, what kind of message would that send? Uh, well, it's a secret a trip, so... Who knows how it would go if I got caught. Is it too risky or not? I'm gonna go with no. No. <sighs> no. Make a decision and stick to it. A few days later, you received a letter from Pales. Duke Reinhardt expressed his disappointment that you couldn't meet him and wrote that he had hoped to reestablish relations between Pales and Rizia once you took the throne. Uh, I could show it to the king and tell him, you know, show him I'm loyal to him as his son. Or I could just uh, pretend it never happened. I'm going to show it to the king. Stayed close with your father in the months that followed, though you were both too busy to see each other as often as you would have liked. As Vina grew into an intelligent, self-reliant young woman, your mother moved back to the capital. 
She called you one night, her voice shaking. The king was dying. This was 1949. He'd gone straight to bed after dinner. When your mother went to check on him later, she found him comatose in the bathroom. Bedroom. The doctor suspected a heart attack. I rushed to see him. Your father looked pale as a ghost. It took all his effort to speak. In a hoarse whisper, he warned you not to follow in his footsteps. Your reign would be a fresh start for House Taurus. A new chance to take back the lands that were lost. He closed his eyes. Long live the king. That's me. Oh boy. Only after his funeral, gathered at the palace with your mother and daughter, did the realization begin to dawn on you. From the day you were born, your entire life had been leading to this moment. Now it was finally here. God save the king. Chapter one. King Romus. There we go. So that's a good introduction to uh, King Romus here. I took the side of the nationalist and then uh, probably pissed off the pales. I uh, choose the distinct look of King Romus of Taurus. The confirmed style will remain throughout the story and you won't be able to change it later. Let's, uh, yeah, let's make this guy look as much like me as we can. Kinda. Oh, God. Yeah, there we go. Okay. No. We're not gonna make him look like me. We're not gonna give him a hat. That's just... There we go. Facial hair. Anything any more Burnside-y? There we go. Oh, there we go. That's what I want to see. Attire. Chorus Royal attire. Ceremonial attire. Gray suit. Brown suit. What type? <laughs> Wiseman's robes. <laughs> okay. Red velvet. He's wearing his bathroom all the time. Uh, let's go with that. Looks good with the facial hair. Background turquoise, brown, red, blah, blah, like it really matters. Whoops. Uh, accessories, gold glasses, a cigar, a lesbian cigar at that, very good. Thin glasses, pipe, none. We'll go with none. There we go. Uh, as King Romus Taurus, you have extensive power to enact and shape the course of your nation. By choosing different focus options, you can improve the strategic direction of your country. Give me one second here. Okay, government structure and tension. Opting for absolutism would solidify monarchic traditions, concentrate power and authority within House Taurus. I was trying to find a way to turn the music down there, but... Really, I gotta do that from the main menu. Alternatively, considering reform aligns with House Cezanne and the Rizian People's Party, indicating a pot potential shift towards wider civic participation and perhaps nuanced resource re redistribution. Conversely, adhering to the status quo seeks to uphold the prevailing balance of power in some provincial autonomy. Uh, I'm going to go full-blown monarchist here. As king... Oh, all right, here we go. A focus on strengthening our resource economy emphasizes leveraging our national, national, natural assets, safeguarding our long-term energy commitments. Alternatively, efforts to diversify the economy away from sole resource reliance aim for a more balanced financial landscape, potentially mitigating risk associated with over-reliance. A mixed strategy, on the other hand, would give us more flexibility. Uh, No diversity here. They give us plus one to the budget. Um, 
this is anything like the base game having a solid budget is pretty important um plus one to authority would be nice too but uh that's kind of vague mixed strategy on the other hand would give us more flexibility by what and how so we're going to go with diversity with a plus one to our budget in the face of global tension rizia stands at a strategic nexus interventionism champions a proactive military stance Appeasement fosters diplomacy with Wayland and courts the monarchy of Rumberg. Opting for the third way, which is just called the third way, <laughs> veers towards regional alliances, notably with Dirtia, Pales, and Morelia, sidestepping dominant powers. Uh, well, I did marry a daughter of Rumberg. Uh, interventionism champions a proactive military stance. I could go with that. I mean, I'm going for... I'm, I'm a hard monarchist. Uh, so, I could see appeasement leading to having to make compromises that uh, someone of my esteemed nature would not want to make. Uh, and the third wave varies towards regional alliances. Oh, man. Uh, this is why I like this game. Is that these choices are going to affect the rest of the entire playthrough. And the entire story. Um... Well, I am going to go with the appeasement um, just because I think that having the major powers on our side might be a good thing. Um, the uh, regional powers, they're, they're all small. Um, if push comes to shove, I guess having the larger powers on our side in anything that could happen around the map might be a good way to go. Uh, strategic focus. Okay, right. Military branch focus. A shift in focus to the Rizian Air Force could position us for potential aerial superiority. By exploring advanced pilot training and considering an expansion of our bomber fleet, we might enhance our capabilities for precision strikes and extend our bombing operational reach, aiming for a balanced control in our airspace. Uh, that's a negative one on the budget. Which one's our budget here? We got a seven for a budget. And seven. Uh, directing resources towards the army could pave the way for enhanced ground operations, potentially introducing advanced armored vehicles, artillery, and modern infantry. Equipment. Modern infantry equipment. Embracing these tactics and training methods, methodologies, might alleviate our territorial defense potential, providing opportunities to explore more strategic land campaigns. A uh, strategic tilt towards the Navy could underscore our maritime aspirations. By evaluating the integration of advanced warship design for naval bombardment and amphibious landing capabilities, we may set the stage for a strengthened naval presence and a broader influence in international waters. Uh, none. <laughs> Opting against a specific military branch focus could free up resources for other sectors. This choice might grant more fiscal flexibility, ensuring a diverse approach to national priorities and sound fiscal management, plus one to the budget. Uh, I'm going to go with the Army. It's going to cost two for the budget, but we have a little bit of budget to play with right now, so um, you can't hold ground without an Army. 
So, if we have to take and hold, the army's going to be the one to do it. Yes. Uh, what's all this? Collection item unlocked. The wife Lena's wedding ring recovered from her body after the fateful boating trip. Large blue amethyst still reminds you of her eyes. How sweet. And sad. Her name carved into the gold a reminder. Okay. Oh my god. Ah, where did they all go? Alright, well. The angelic sounding voices of a boys choir echoed through the great hall of Palace Rins Resna. To most Rizians, this was the grandest room in the grandest building in the entire country. To me, it was just home. I remembered playing hide and seek among the mosaic tiled columns while visiting my grandmother, goofing off with Pabel. See, here we go. This is great. Pablo Adria is the head butler to the King Arizia. So my best friend is now my butler. Okay. So in the codex you have history with all these choices. Locations. And organizations. So you got information on everything. Okay. I remember playing hide and seek with uh, Pavel in the upper gallery as my father met with foreign dignitaries. And of course, this was where I had married Lena. I leaned forward in the Scylla Orica, the golden plated wooden throne on which all monarchs of Rizia were coronated. The hall before me was filled with nobles, politicians, businesses, business magnates, even movie stars. The television crew moved up and down the aisles, broadcasting the ceremony to the Rizian public for the first time. My mother was sitting in the front row next to Uncle Hugo. Let's see what Uncle Hugo looks like. Nice eye. Tradition dictate that in the absence of a king or queen consort, the seat next to me would be filled by the successor to the throne. Vina, that's my daughter. Seems a little old to be my daughter. But, you know. <sighs> Keen intellect and loves riding horses. Ah. Could have just waited. There she is. How are you feeling, Father? Uh, ready for the next chapter? Honestly, a little nervous. My feelings are none of your business. That's rude. Stop fidgeting. The cameras are on us. I'm confident. I am a confident king. Ready for the next chapter, darling. And she smiles. Me too. I wish Mother was the one sitting here, though. Yeah, me too. Final notes of the coronation hymn... By his sword I live, rang out. An expected silence filled the hall. It was broken by the sound of shuffling footsteps. The cameras followed Brand Wiseman, Sal Ignatius, as he walked slowly down the central aisle, bearing a velvet cushion. So he's like the Pope, I guess. Religious leader. He presented it in front of me. On it was the Taurus crown, a black onyx orb, and a scroll containing the words to the royal oath. Uh, I'm going to take the orb. I lifted the orb off the cushion and ran my fingers across its smooth surface. It was inlaid with a trio of diamonds representing the three royal houses of Rizia, Taurus, Azaro, and Cezanne. I'm going to look at the crown. I gazed at the Taurus crown, forged when my family took the throne 150 years ago. Wow. Long-serving dynasty here. See if we can uh, keep it in power. 
It was made of pure gold adorned with two twisting spires resembling bull's horns. I'm going to look at my mom. Caught my mother's eye. She gave me a conspiratorial wink. And now I guess I'll say the oath. I took the scroll off the cushion and read it aloud. I hereby pledge myself in service to the great nation of Rizia and its people. I promise to guide my country with a steadfast hand to uphold the laws of this land under St. Ruhr, watchful eye. That's our religion. And I'm uh, spiritual, so good. To wield the sword of justice and the shield of mercy in equal measures. All this I shall do until the day I die. May Saint Ruhek fill you with his Holy Spirit on this day as he did your ancestors before you. With trembling hands, Grand Wiseman Ignatius lifted the crown off the cushion. I could spot a gray hair still clinging to its inner rim, my father's. May you keep the promises you have made before God and your people. The crown came down on my head. Its heaviness surprised me. By the divine power vested in me, I proclaim you sovereign king of Rizia. Rise, King Romus. I stood. The choir broke into On Shores of Gold, the Rizian national anthem. Proceed with the coronation. I decided to proceed without making a speech. Everyone in the crowd bowed their head as Vina and I made our way down the aisle. I passed my cousin Rico. In the second row, he looked up at me and smiled. As we kept walking, I recognized various other members of Rizia's three royal houses as well as monarchs from distant kingdoms. The entire back row was reserved for the Rumbergian royal family and their entourage. I could feel my sister-in-law Beatrice's eyes on me. We reached the end of the hall where a spiral staircase led to the palace balcony. Uh, come Vina, let's greet your future subjects. Or I've got to do this alone. He's coming with me. My daughter beamed and put her arm through mine. We walked up and up the stairs until we came to a door. I stepped out onto the balcony. The sunlight was so dazzling I was almost blinded. When my eyes adjusted, I regarded the scene below me. Thousands and thousands of people were packed into the palace grounds, some waving the Rizian flag, others the House Taurus banner. I like that better. I like the Rizian flag. It's nice. Why I used it in the thumbnail. Just beyond them, at the gates, the police easily held back a small pocket of protesters. I paid little attention to them. I was focused on the noise of the crowd and overwhelming roar that gradually cohered into a single chant. Oh boy. Salute nas axa regu novus. Sister Vesta. Oops, sorry. All hail the new king. There we go. Alright, so I am going to call this episode right here. We are now king of Rizia. This is the capital in Porte Dragon. Uh, we have... All right, Wayland's here. This is what they hold, the territory of Zeal. Uh, ow. World map, regional map. There we go. All right, national map. All right, so this is Rizia in all its states. This is uh, Morella, our neighbors, Dirtia. And Wayland. Um, you have news to attend to. And a lot of work to 
get started as our as our new uh, kingdom starts. Okay. Sorry about that. Anyway, we are going to continue this in episode number two. If you like this episode, hit the like button. Uh, leave your thoughts, tips, and advice in the comment section down below. I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, season premiere here and seeing King Romus down in the corner there. Take his uh, rightful seat on the throne of Rizia. If you want to follow along through the uh, third season as we play as uh, King Romus Taurus in Suzer and Rizia, hit the subscribe. Wouldn't mind having you come along with us. Um, more the merrier, as always. Uh, we'll pick this up in episode number two, J76NY, saying thank you very much for watching and have yourself a very good day.